This first poem, In the Arms of Morpheus, is a series of bizarre dreams that I've had, and I've stitched them together to make one poem. So here it is, In the Arms of Morpheus. Benumbed, I sway over Morpheus's moist tongue, like a red carpet that leads me into my other life. I play golf with Robert Redford. He's my partner in a charity tournament. I keep whiffing and whiffing, swinging at the air, missing the ball. He hisses, for God's sake, why did they ever ask you to be my partner? Keep your head down, damn it, and your eye on the ball. I am, I am, I do keep it down. Then I ask him, why did you have your face lifted? In this half-life, I take a lit course with Richard Burton or Dylan Thomas. I always get them confused. We're studying Thomas Hardy's Return of the Native. The instructor, whichever one he is, asks, why did the native return? I raise my hand and answer, it's usually a mistake. Here I meet a man who tells me he's blind. I believed him. But when he found my checkbook, I asked, how can a blind man write so many checks? Then he bit me. Vanished. There are three of us left after the structures fell. None of us have survival skills. No ability to plant, no guns for hunting. Although I have not seen any birds or animals to shoot. We have no way to fish, and even if we did, the fish would be tainted. I wonder what we'll do when the food rots, when the ice melts. There is no light from the frightened stars hiding their disfigurement. Already we eye each other as possible edibles, trying to live in this abandoned land. But there is plenty of money. Is that all there is, this parking lot of loneliness? You think I can make you feel young again, hide determined death, love you? Who said after the kiss comes the impulse to throttle? Is that romantic enough for you? I don't say any of this. He wants to walk the beach, but not alone. He wants to meet me anywhere, maybe at Starbucks. I want to ask, aren't you strong enough to live on your own? But I don't. I tell him I never go out, don't want to hurt his feelings. He says, well, if you're not interested, what about your friend? What about Roberta? If we had stopped, we would have had nothing. And uh, that's the title of my new manuscript, my new book. If we had stopped, we would have had nothing. You're a self-centered, self-assured girl, a popular pom-pom prom queen, stubborn with a hot temper, truly a Taurus type. Do you take this boy, this handsome, motherless quarterback, intelligent loner, passive aggressive, alcoholic Aquarian, unfaithfully yours for better or worse? I did. Mansionizing. They're bulldozing again. This time my tree left leafless like a stick. And the new owner to be says, Your tree was already dead. Nothing small remains, only terrazzo palazzos. No hearts on sleeves this Valentine's Day. Not a doily pasted on a homemade card. Maybe these mansions make for happiness bigger than love. Perhaps they're built big and bound to end in tears. I had one once. Bloat. We're seated at the hardwood table, eating escargot, pate de foie gras, served by a tummy tuck neo blonde. Six courses, flute decorated, and still no dessert. I tell those who will listen, the water is rising. It's midway up our chairs. But the guests are discussing Janet Jackson's breast and Jesus. 
I notice a cadaver floating around us. Somebody do something. I'm too squeamish to touch it. Will you all stop eating? This person needs a burial. Strawberry sorbet is served. This next one is called privileged. And I truly feel privileged. The poet looks out his window and sees the bell, the moth, the rabbits. But my blinds are drawn. I can hear the planes overhead. No bombs are dropped today. The commander says, the Russians are coming. The Russians are coming. No, it's that fog again. This is what he says. The terrorists are coming. The terrorists are coming to follow us home. An ambulance screeches nearby, but not for me as yet. A large pink grapefruit chills in my refrigerator, along with nectarines and Gatorade, and I have health care. In the trunk of my car, there's bottled water, walking shoes, and a first aid kit, but no exit plan. Outside on the curb, my slashed black trash barrel will be replaced with a new one. Careless. They tore the wallpaper from the ceiling, the faded green paper with white daisies. They stole the clocks the rosy rim cups, saucers, and silver. The place was a mess when I returned, and I wondered why, since we are all guests here. Unreliable. My marriage was a set of false teeth, except for the night I held Frank Sinatra's hand at the sands. Well, not every tooth was false. One was still hanging on tender hopes. Can a man's eyes become blurred by moon dreams and Angela? That Angela, who could arch one brow and with needy eyes spread wide her lusty wings. As I've told you before, infidelity is not so bad if you like humility and just a little breakdown and loss of blood before dessert. Peach pie was my specialty and salvation, a crust of flakiness. Nietzsche, friend, said, you really bake. Running on empty. This is my plan, although I'm not entirely sure, since so many in the past have taken another twist. When the war is over, when I can no longer drive, I'll get a little dog. Maybe a puppy, but a puppy needs training. I'm not too good at that. I tried it on my husband, whom I secretly named an exotic pet. And then you know what happened. Off came the apron. Concentrate on the clip and curl. Comb out to fluff and cute. Then ask your teacher, why goldenrod, cream tuna, Chip beef, again. This is what I learned it takes. Two tablespoons of butter, one tablespoon of flour, mix milk to blend. If lumpy, put through sieve and stir. No wonder flour then. Add more milk, don't let it burn or brown. I truly tried to make it smooth. It never turned out right when blindly vanished youthful years I began to write. 